Well, hi there. Welcome to Chess Base Workshop. My name is Steve Lopez. Thank you for joining us. Why do we go to a board? That's not what I want. I don't want this. Thanks for joining us. Um, I'm your host for this every week, and I set that up in advance, that board, because I want to come back to it later. We're going to talk about uh, the search mask in Chess Base and Fritz today, the stuff that you'll see here, even though I have Chess Base 10 up on the screen. Um, this stuff will apply to Fritz, Ribka, uh, Shredder, High Arcs, all of them. Okay, so uh, you can do this in your playing program as well. We're going to talk about the search mask. It's one of those things I've covered a zillion times now through the years. Back when I was doing written articles, I wrote about it multiple times. I may have even already done a video on this topic. I really don't remember. I've been doing this for a year now, and I'm getting old, so I don't remember things as well as I used to. They say your memory is first thing to go, and I forget what the second one is, so I'm, I'm sliding fast. Um... But this is one of those things you really can't cover too many times because you always get questions about it when you do tech support, when you answer emails, etc. And we'll talk about tech support here after a little bit as well. Um, we're going to show you first of all how to bring up, bring up Search Mask in Chess Base 10. You just right click and select Search. Very simple. And there's your Search Mask. Um, I click the reset button because it will tend to show you the result or, or what you last searched for. Again, we will come back to that directly. But what this allows you to do, and, and i got to tell you, honestly, I truly believe this. Um, chess base is, is wonderful. And, and I'm not saying that just because I work for them. Um, when I first was exposed to this stuff, before I was even employed by the company, I had, uh, I had Night Stalker, which was Fritz 1, and there was like a cut-down version of chess base, a starter version in those days, the old DOS days, called chess base access that let you do some searches as well. And when I saw that you could do game searches on a database to find what you want, I, it blew me away. I mean, for if nothing else, this is absolutely worth every penny of the price of the program if, if this is all you use in it. Even if you don't use all the other stuff that's in here. If all you do is this, it's worth the money spent. And I'll tell you why. There was a time back in the day when if you wanted to find a particular chess game that you had once played over, um... It would take you forever. You know, you'd have to go digging back through books trying to find that game. Where was that game? Where did I read that? You know, etc. I recently wrote a blog post for Chess Central in which I talked about an Akiba Rubenstein game that I had gone over years ago. And I remember going over this game. Good Lord, it's been more well over a decade ago. It was forever ago. And I didn't even remember which Akiba Rubenstein book I had seen this game in. Yes, I do have chess base, but back in those days, I did not have a, a very portable laptop. That was back in the days when laptop batteries didn't last very long, so you didn't take them with you. So you typically took a book and a little pocket chess set with you when you had to go sit in the doctor's office waiting room or when you went down to the pub for a couple of beers while you're waiting for your friends to show up. Whatever, you always had a pocket set and a book. So I'd come across this Rubenstein game, one using it in a blog post, didn't feel like digging back through a bunch of books. Couldn't even remember which book it came out of. Found it in Chess Base in seconds. And it became part of a blog post that I've recently done, as I said, for Chess Central. So, uh, this is a, rem a remarkable program. What we're going to talk about right now is player searches. Up here you see white and black, and we have boxes. The way this works, it's like a phone book. You put the last name first. Let's say we want to look for Gary's games. It's a very popular search, so we'll type in Kasparov. Now, the other thing you got to realize about databases is there's an old thing called Gigo that we've been saying, uh, computer geeks like myself have been saying for years, Gigo, G-I-G-O, garbage in, garbage out. What that means is if you misspell a player's name, the program doesn't come back with anything. It doesn't give you any games. A, a computer program only knows what you tell it. So if you type in Kasparov with a Z, now you may actually pull up a game. I haven't tried this search. There may be somebody out there with that name, but it's not going to be the guy you're thinking of. It's not going to be the guy you're looking for. You have to know how to spell their name. I'm sorry, there are sort of minimal requirements here. The, the software can't read your mind and know who you're, who you're talking about. It only knows what you tell it. So if you go to look for Kasparov's games, you want all of his games. It doesn't matter whether they're white or black. You make sure ignore colors is checked. 
By the way, there are a couple different Kasparovs, if I remember correctly. So let us just put a G there, just for chuckles. And we can click the OK button. We're going to find all the games of G Kasparov, regardless of what color he played. So you don't need to put it in twice. But the big thing I'm stressing here that you need to remember is this works like a telephone directory. Last name first, first name last. That's why there's a comma in between the boxes. See me moving the mouse here. we got a comma going up and down. All right. So... We click OK, and we wait a few seconds. It doesn't take very long. we got a status bar down there in the corner, and by the time I show it to you, it'll be done. It's down here in the lower right, as I said, it's done. And there's Gary's games. Whole piles of them. You can scroll down through them, click on a game. Uh, here's game where he beats Chucky. Annotated, too. Very cool. Um, down here's one where he's playing Billyovsky. So there's all kinds of games. You can go through and find the games that you want. If you want to find games where two players have played against each other, you can put in another name. Click OK, and it goes through. It takes a hair longer this time because it's got another criteria to look for. It's looking for two different things. Look what we got. All the games are Gary Gaspar plays Anatoly Karpov. Isn't that cool? So... Once again, you're looking looking for World Championship games. You can narrow it down by putting World Championship in the name of the tournament. They did meet before they, uh, you know, in previous occasions before they fought over that World Championship back in 1984-85, and it took forever. You'll remember if you were around then. Amazing story. Anyway, we'll close that. Go back to the search mask. Um, however, there are a couple ways to tweak this. Uh, we'll click Reset, and we'll put in Kasparov again. If we want, whoops, if we want just his games as white, we can uncheck ignore colors right here, and now we will pay attention to what boxes these are in. So if we click OK again, and we wait about, well, then you have time to mention how long we wait. There it is. Gary Kasparov as white. The whole list shows Gary as white. Now we can winnow it down a little bit more if we wish. Remember that when you click on the search mask, it remembers your last search. Until you close the program, you exit the program, it blanks the search mask. But as long as you stay in the program, it remembers your previous search. So we still have G. Kasparov, ignore colors, wins only. So now we're going to get only his white wins. Click OK. There they are. There's Gary is white and everything in the result column says 1-0, white wins only. Pretty cool. So there's different ways to tweak it. Different things that you can do. We will click reset at this point because now there are some other issues that you need to know about searching for particular people. As I said, you have to know how their name is spelled and this can cause an occasional problem. And we're going to talk about that now. For example, a guy popped into my head yesterday out of the clear blue. I was a big fan of this guy back in the day. And somewhere along the line, I forgot him. Shame on me, because this guy was neat. There was a fella way back during the golden age, the early third of the 20th century. Yeah, that's very good. Talk and type at the same time. Never works. His name was Mir Sultan Khan. The guy was basically an Indian peasant. He was a servant back in the days when uh, the British still run India. And he was a servant of, uh, of, of some high muckety-muck, I believe a British fellow in, in India, who was a prodigy at chess. He was an illiterate prodigy. The guy couldn't write or read, so in tournaments he had a servant. Now understand, this guy's a servant, okay? This guy, Mir Sultan Khan, was a servant of this British guy. But he had his own servant to write his moves down for him, and a second servant who would pour him lemonade as he played. And the guy was a prodigy. The guy played amazing stuff. I'm a huge fan of this fellow, and, and I'm not quite sure, other than the story behind him, I'm not quite sure why, because I'll tell you the truth, I don't understand his games. I've been looking at his games now for for years. And, uh, you know, I just I can't make it or tell out of what he does. It's just it's too high concept for me. But if you want to find his games... You have to put in Sultan Khan under, you know, in one of the blanks, either white or black, doesn't matter as long as ignore colors is, is checked, um, because that's technically his last name, at least as far as this database is concerned. So you click OK, 
and you wait a few seconds, and there's his games. And I got to show you this. This is this is cool. If I can find the spot in this game, I was looking at this this morning, and I got to see if I can find the place. Here it comes. Now watch watch the bishop here. This is really cool. White bishop on e1. This is Mir Sultan Khan's playing white here. Watch what the bishop does over the next few moves. This really rocks. This is cool. It climbs the ladder. Watch this. That's cool. That's getting a blog post. That's blog worthy right there. That's gonna that's gonna get a blog post just because it's so strange. But it's a, a a textbook example, by the way, of how to turn a bad bishop into a good bishop, uh, and he does it by climbing this ladder, climbing a trellis, and there it is. Ta-da! It's that that is just so neat. So I want to throw that in there, and just show you why we're here. There's a couple names you're gonna have some real big problems with in uh, in in doing searches in a database. Can you guess the two names that they are? Well, one of them is Korchnoi, and the other one is Nimzovich. Curse you, dang Cyrillic alphabet. Um, when you try to take uh, games from the Russian alphabet, it happens with Greek sometimes, too, but mostly the Russian, when you try to translate them into the, the, the English alphabet, it doesn't quite work. There are some letters that don't translate quite directly, and so you wind up with... Um, doing phonetic substitutions and the problem with phonics you know it's like trying to spell phonics if you don't know that it's a ph you might spell it with an f you know how ironic uh you know there's a pile of different ways to spell Korchnoi and nemzovich so the way you ought to do it honestly is you look for them another way rather than do them in the mega database at least the first time you look for them and and i'll tell you how to do it and and this is actually when you find their names it's actually worth writing down on a slip of paper and putting it aside someplace close at hand so you'll remember. That way you can put it into the search mask and combine your searches, like look for a particular board position material or maneuvers, or whatever, in the games of these couple of fellas. But the way you should look is like this. The first time, anyway, is like this. Get out of the, get out of the search mask, because you could be there all day typing in different combinations of letters and still not hit it. Double click on the mega database or, or big database, whichever one you're using, whatever database. Double click on its icon. And you get your game list, of course. And we're going to go over here and we're going to find the player list. And this is where you can scroll up and down and find different players. I said Fisher. That's ironic. I'm going there too later. Um, here's how you find them. Down here it says search. Okay. Well, K-O-R is how Korchnoi's name is spelled no matter what. Victor Korchnoi. Um, so we go K-O-R, and we find C-H, and C-H-E, K-O-R-C-H. We're looking for an N. Pardon me, I'm going to put my glasses on. You may hear the microphone rattle because I'm wearing a headset. Um, yep, we go K-O-R-C-H-M, and then skip N and go right to O. So we know that isn't it. So where do we go now? Well, same thing happens with, with Nimzovich. They throw in these extra extra letters, and one of them is a T. Kortnoi. And guess what? We find him. Can you see him? He's in this list on the left side of the screen. Do you see it? Is the video resolution good enough, and are you looking? Because right here he is. K-O-R. T-S-C-H-N-O-J is how Korchnoi's name appears in this database. Once again, it's that phonetic spelling thing, plus I believe that there were some extra letters left in the Scrabble box, and they just threw them in there, um, just so that the, the box would be empty for once. Um, that's crazy. I mean, that's a crazy way to spell his name. Uh, here in the States, I'm a Yank. I guess you could tell by the way I talk. Actually, in the United States, I'm a Reb, but that's another story. K-O-R-C-H-N-O-I is how we spell his name here in the United States. Korchnoi. Uh, we don't have a T, we don't have an S, we don't, and we dang sure don't end it with a J, because here it would be Korchnodge, which sounds like eggnog you left out overnight or something. Um, I, I don't know. It's an interesting spelling, but you'll never find it unless you knew about this. So uh, that's why I'm trying to... Uh, trying to tell you here so write that down somewhere put that aside so you'll know or if you've got a really really good memory unlike me as we've already discussed um you know if you can remember it great if not write it down keep it close in hand um 
But just so you know, in the future, if you're looking for Victor's games, that's how you need to spell it. Nimzovich is another one. Um, that one's easy to find, though. Watch, it won't come up or something just to make me wrong. Just type in Nimzo, and there's Nimzo Witch. W-I-T-S-C-H, once again, a couple extra letters in there. I spelled N-I-M-Z-O-V-I-C-H, but your mileage may vary. Either way, that's how his name is spelled in this database. Nimzo Witch, uh, with a W, although the W is pronounced as a V. Cyrillic alphabet again. Um, so, that's how you do it. Those are two you're going to have a big problem with. Um, another one that's a big problem with some people when you do a search is you're going to try to find Bobby Fischer's games. The great Robert J. Fisher, the uh, American world champion of the early 1970s. If you're going to look for his games, you do not spell it like that because you're going to come up with something entirely different. You need to type in F-I-S-C-H-E-R. In fact, you can put an R right there. Click OK, and you'll get games. There we go. U.S. under 18, 1955. There's our boy, uh, Robert Fisher, against D. Ames, who has a historical distinction. He is whoever D. Ames is, is the first guy to play. Bobby Fischer in a serious, important tournament game, 1955 U.S. Under-18 Championship, and drew him, which is pretty cool, too, for Mr. Ames. Another problem possibly you run into with doing searches in chess base is this, and this is why I have a board window open already, and I'll hit it for you now. Let's go ahead and clear it. I got an email one time from a guy just going into this rant about how stupid our program was because it could not find the games of Robert J. Fisher, the World Championship. What was wrong with us? We didn't have them in our database, or our program was too stupid to find them. After a little bit of digging around, we come to find out what had occurred. And this is what had occurred. He'd been doing a search for games on the Grob using the search mask, okay? Unless you click either the reset button here, or the reset button down here, the software will still think you're looking for games of the Grob. What this fellow had done was he had done his search for Grob games, had looked at them, then he comes back over to game data, and he types in Fisher R, clicks OK, and is angry. I don't know why it would ask me to do that, but no, we, uh, we'll just skip that for now. We'll come back. No games found. What's wrong with your program? I typed in Robert Fisher and got nothing. Well, it's because the search mask, as you see, remembers your last search. So it is looking for the games of R. Fisher. It's also looking for the games of R. Fisher, which start with 1G4. Never happened. Bobby used to say uh, 1E4 best by test, although he didn't always play 1E4, by the way. He did occasionally throw the English at somebody as well. But he definitely never touched the grob with a 10-foot pole. So, if you discover something like this, I mean, if you're having a search and you're having problems with it, this is a possible solution, that you've done a prior search on something entirely different, gone in, put in other search criteria, and it's mixing the two. It's combining them. You're, everything you put in the search mask, it's going to look for all this stuff combined. It's not. It's not in. A, it's not a uh, what we call an or search, where this would be a combined search where it pulls up all of Bobby Fisher's games and all of the Grob games. It's not an or search. It's an and search. If you're into into all this Boolean stuff. Um, and it means that both things have to apply for any games to come up. So anytime you're putting in a uh, particular criteria, there are places in the search mask where you can do uh, the Boolean or. That one of these is it. The position, uh, uh, the position tab in the search mask allows you to do, look for something or something else. 
So you can kind of combine the two. But that's one of those rare situations. In general, the search mask does and searches where everything you put in the search mask has to apply. In fact, we will talk about that in our next chess-based workshop. Until then, have fun.